Hello there. Uh, in this video, uh, let's understand regarding the body fluid compartments. So prior to that, briefly, let's understand regarding the body composition. Now remember that in an average young adult male, the 60 percentage of the body weight is water. That means if at all the weight is 100 kgs, out of this 100 kgs, 60 kgs is water. That is what it means. 18 percentage of the body weight is protein, 15 percentage is fat and the remaining 7 percentage of the body weight is mineral. Now this 60 percentage of the body weight which is water it is divided into two compartments what are these two compartments one is which is present inside the cell another one is which is present outside the cell so the one which is present inside the cell that is called as intracellular fluid and the one which is present outside that is called as the extracellular fluid so out of this 60 percentage remember that 40 percentage of the total body weight is constituted by intracellular fluid and the 20% remaining is the one which is constituted by the extracellular fluid. Now this extracellular fluid which is there, this is divided basically into two more compartments. One is the interstitial fluid. Now what is this interstitial fluid? Interstitial fluid is the fluid which is present in the interstitial spaces. Now what do we understand by interstitial space is that this is the space which is present in between the cells, this space. And here there is water. This is what is called as the interstitial fluid which makes up 15% of the total body weight. And the remaining 5% of the total body weight is contributed by the plasma. Now, what is plasma? Plasma is the fluid part of the blood. So, that means plasma, where it should be present, it should be present in the blood vessels. That's why it is called as intravascular portion of the extracellular fluid. Now, apart from the interstitial fluid and the plasma, there is one more fluid that is called as the transcellular fluid. Now, this transcellular fluid makes up very little percentage of the extracellular fluid. And where is this transcellular fluid present? Transcellular fluid is found in the body cavities. So, what are the examples of this transcellular fluid? The transcellular fluid, one example is the fluid which is present in the pleural space, which is called as a pleural fluid. Fluid which is present in the pericardial space, this is called as a pericardial fluid fluid which is present in the peritoneal flu peritoneal space this is called as peritoneal fluid there is also cerebrospinal fluid which is nothing but the transcellular fluid and also the fluid which is present in the synovial cavities okay this is also an example of transcellular fluid one more example we can give is the fluid which is present in the eye which is called as the vitreous humor or also called as a vitreous body. So all these are examples of transcellular fluid which constitutes very minimal or very little percentage. Now I have already told you this thing that the body fluids are divided into two parts. The one which is present inside the cell is called as the intracellular fluid and the one which is present outside is called as the extracellular fluid. Now how much is the intracellular fluid? That also we know intracellular fluid is 40 percentage of the total body weight. Now how much will be this 40 percent if I want to convert it into liters in an average young adult male? This amounts to about 28 liters of water which is present in the intracellular space. Now how much is there in the extracellular space? Extracellular space is the remaining 20 percentage of the total body water and this is the one which is coming up to roughly 14 liters of water. And as I have already told you that the extracellular fluid is divided into two compartments. There is an interstitial fluid and also an intravascular fluid which is called as a plasma. So the interstitial fluid contributed 15 percentage of the total body weight which comes roughly to about 11 liters. And how much is the plasma? Plasma is the one which is about 5 percentage of the total body weight which is coming to 3 liters. So that means 28 liters is the intracellular fluid okay and 14 liters is the extracellular fluid now out of this 14 liters 11 liters is the interstitial fluid and 3 liters is the plasma okay where is plasma present as we all know plasma is the fluid portion of the blood and it is present inside the blood vessels that's why it is also called as the intravascular portion of the extracellular fluid now remember that the interstitial fluid and the intracellular fluid, they are divided by this membrane which is called as the cell membrane and there will be a continuous exchange of fluid as well as ions between the interstitial as well as the intracellular fluid. Similarly, the interstitial fluid and the plasma are also divided by means of the capillary membrane and here also there is going to be continuous exchange. Now, what are the differences between extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid? The differences are with respect to the contents of the ECF and the contents of the ICF. Now, as here we can see in this table, the extracellular fluid is rich in two important ions. What are these? One is the sodium, another one is the chloride. Whereas, 
the intra this is the extracellular fluid is it is rich in sodium as well as in chloride whereas the intracellular fluid is rich in a very important ion which is called as potassium it is also rich in phosphates okay and also there is a high content of protein so these differences are very important we have to understand that extracellular fluid is rich in two important ions one is the sodium another one is the chloride whereas the intracellular fluid is rich in potassium also rich in phosphates and other organic anions and also proteins so i told you that extracellular fluid is divided into two compartments okay one is the plasma another is the interstitial fluid so what is the most important difference with respect to these two is that plasma is having a high concentration of proteins these are called as the plasma proteins whereas interstitial fluid is having a less concentration of proteins apart from these two there is no much difference in between the interstitial fluid and the plasma so this is the difference between ecf and icf now how, how are we going to measure these body fluids we will measure these body fluids using a very important technique which is called as di dilution method or it is also called as indicator dilution method so what we do here is a known volume of indicator is inserted into the compartment which we want to measure and using this important formula we can get to know how much is the volume of that compartment so the formula is v is equal to a1 minus a2 divided by c wherein v stands for volume of distribution a1 stands for amount of dye which is injected i know how much is the amount of dye i am injecting a2 stands for amount of dye which is excreted or metabolized and c stands for the concentration of dye in the fluid or in the fluid of that particular compartment which i am willing to measure so one example i will give you let's say i want to find out the volume of the extracellular fluid and i am using the dye which is called as the sucrose so the amount of dye injected is a1 which is 150 milligrams the amount of dye which is either excreted or metabolized is 10 milligrams and the concentration which is achieved in that particular compartment which is the extracellular fluid of this dye is 0 0.01 milligrams per ml so when we put all these values we are going to get the uh, value of the extracellular fluid which is coming to 14,000 ml or it is coming to 14 liter that's why few people also say because sucrose is used for the measurement of ECF ECF is also called as the sucrose space it's also called as the sucrose space okay so we use different dyes for measurements of different compartments so what should be the characteristic features of an ideal dye the first and foremost thing is because we are injecting this dye into the human body this dye should be non-toxic very important and whichever compartment i am putting this dye into it should mix thoroughly and evenly in that compartment and the concentration of dye which i am measuring which is the denominator c that should be very easy to measure okay and dye should remain only in the compartment let's say i want to measure the volume of extracellular fluid i want the dye to remain in the extracellular fluid and it shouldn't move to the intracellular fluid okay so dye should remain in the compartment that is measured and even the a2 which i am calculating which is the amount of dye which is uh, excreted or metabolized or metabolized that also should be very easy to determine so these are the characteristic features of an ideal dye so what are the different materials which we use for measurement we can easily measure three very important compartments we can measure the total body water we can measure the extracellular fluid and we can also measure the plasma but we cannot measure the intracellular fluid as well as the interstitial fluid directly so which dyes are we using for total body water we use deuterium oxide we use tritium oxide we use aminopyrin and antipyrin to measure the extracellular fluid as i have already told you in the examples we use sucrose we use inulin mannitol and radioactive sodium this can be remembered by sim r this is uh, easy way of remembering sucrose inulin mannitol and radioactive iodine uh, radioactive sodium not iodine for measurement of plasma we use evans blue and we also use radio labeled albumin now how we can measure the intracellular fluid intracellular fluid can be measured by this by calculating total body water and the extracellular fluid and by subtracting these two so this is regarding the body fluids thank you for listening